I'm Mike. I'm Jason. This is Snake Envy. So we are thrilled tonight to be with Don of Don's Garter Snakes and arguably one of the best garter snakes, if not the best garter snake collection in the country. Are there any garter snake collections out there that you're actually envious of? There's a couple. Uh, my friend Rob Shea has a pretty good collection in New Jersey. Um, got some nice Mexican species. Um, <clears throat> Brett Dunn has some nice stuff at his place. Um, and You mentioned was, a guy in Canada. Oh, Canada. Uh, Mike Eastern. Yeah. Uh, that's what he goes by on Facebook. He's got some really nice flame Easterns and bright yellow ones that really stand out on I Want to Get. <laughs> wow. Well, that's nice of you to plug those guys. Uh, Jason, you had a quick question there? Um, yeah, I've kept garters before. Just a few. I had some albino checkers and some annery red, western red sided, I believe. Or eastern. It was one of the red sides. It's been 20 years. Um, but anyways, they're beautiful. Um, how often do you, do you feed your snakes, your garter snakes? Usually you try and feed the babies at least twice a week, and the adults get fed once a week. Okay. And I give them as much as they can eat. Okay. Yeah, because they, they're, don't they have high metabolism? Yes, they do. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of why, that's why I asked that question. Yeah, so. yeah. And real quickly, before we get going too far, just kind of introduce yourself, your business. Where can people uh, most easily reach you and inquire about purchasing all that good stuff? So I'm Don, uh, Don Balnat from Don's Garters. Um, this is my hobby. Uh, best place to contact me is through Facebook under Don's Garter Snakes. Um, message me anytime. I'm usually pretty good at answering quickly. Um, and that's the best way to get a hold of me. You ask any questions you want, care, feeding, maintenance, what's available, all that good stuff. So speaking of that, when I all the years I've been in the hobby, every time I hear garter snake, one of the first things that comes to mind is they, they don't necessarily do well in captivity. But I'm betting that that reputation is based on people taking them out of the wild. And you got snakes that are used to fish and amphibians and snails and slugs and then they're trying to feed them mice and they don't transition well so you've been doing this for how long i've been keeping garter snakes since 1980 and okay. i started uh my breeding um started my don's garter snakes breeding project in uh, 2004. so obviously they do do well in captivity. yes <clears throat> yes a lot of times with wild um they have a set diet out there that they're used to um, everybody likes to feed their snakes mice, and they don't always take to the mice. You have to train them. Yep. Um, and that's why they're popular as a first starter snake because a lot of parents don't want to catch, you know, have mice to feed yeah. to their snakes. Right. They do well just fine on fish and worms. They yep. get all the as long as they eat the whole fish with the internal organs and everything, they get all the nutrition they need. And we noticed right when we came in, you're raising feeder fish. And uh, now, is that just to provide for a varied diet, or do you have some, even captive snakes, that do better on fish than rodents? I generally use like I use the feeder fish for you know new stuff that I get in it. Um, I get wild caught in increased gotcha. gene pools that may not take to the um, frozen fish because I buy I buy cases of uh, frozen smelt. And then I chop that up for them, and if they take that, great. Um, babies, I'll feed guppies and minnows to get them going um, with the live fish. Um, some of them are picky, and sometimes you can get them going with that. And yeah. I've actually thrown uh, pinkies in the um, water dish with the fish, and as they're chasing around grabbing, once they grab something, they're going to eat it because there's, there's nothing, you know, they got to grab it and eat it while they can. So that's, I, that's gotten <clears throat> a lot of money. I have a neighbor with a garter snake, and she was asking me she uh, about whether to transition to mice or not. And that's exactly what I recommended to her. I said, well, you're already feeding fish. So I gave her some frozen pinkies and said, just put those in the water bowl with the fish. And at first, they're not going to know the difference. They'll just scarf <laughs> them up and... Once you get those first ones down, usually that's all it mm -hmm. takes, and then they recognize, hey, this is good stuff. Yeah. Did you have another one, Jason? Um, yeah, like, so the wild cots can have parasites, I, guess, I would assume, but, like, 
what do you do to treat them? Do you do flagell? Do you do what do you? Um, I've you, got um, pyrantal right now that I use. Okay. Um, I haven't used that. So this will use it in my work all the time for okay. dogs and cats. Good so to know. I use that. It's good <clears> to know. Good to know. And, uh, uh, I would I drop a little in a syringe with water and then I would tube them, but uh, I just found a new trick where I was feeding one of the big valleys and I just poured a little on the fish and mice and stirred it up and she ate it right down. <laughs> That's kind of what I do like with when I get the the magic, the gold from Mexico, the flagell in the bottle, pre-made. I just pour it on. Yeah, works great. <laughs> Speaking of wild cots, we, we brought you one today. We, uh, we have a sec super secret uh, herping spot that we've discovered and there's some unusual gophers there, people familiar with our channel. They've seen kind of our herping quest that we're calling it down there for, for patternless gopher snakes. Uh, but we were mentioning to you not long ago, there's some interesting garters down there too. Wandering garters here in Utah tend to be a little plain. They, they tend to be gray, yellow stripes. Yeah. There's not always a lot of contrast. But we've seen some down there uh, very dark, orange rather than yellow. This particular one, this female we brought you, has a, a dashed... <coughs> top stripe so we're still going to try and find you a male uh but there's definitely some interesting ones down there so what'd you think of that female oh she's she's a beauty i mean i love how yellow she is with the brown background big checkers yeah you know just, you know just yeah taking out that stripe it's, she's a real nice one uh really good looking wandering girders really stand out <laughs> yes yes <laughs> when you find them um, okay, so we're going to introduce everybody to your daughters who help you out with the business, and then we're going to have you show off some of your collection. But just to give people maybe a little preview, what are one or two or three of the the subspecies you keep that are really something you're proud of? Uh, my favorite are the Plains Carters. They're just one of the calmest. Um, and I've got several different localities. A couple of them are really nice, bright stripes. Um, they also, one of the wild cow females gave birth to two golden males. They're just speckled and oh, wow. they're getting big and nice. turning green. So wow. they're, they're, the plains are my favorite. And then, of course, I love the valley garters and red, uh, red sided. Those are some of my favorites. Yeah, those, those uh, valley garters with a little bit of red in them, we've got those here in Utah. And are you <coughs> referring with red sided to the ones in the Bay Area the, in California? I love the California red sided. Um, Lost my big female last year. Those are everybody's favorite. Yeah. Um, Arguably one of the most beautiful snakes on the planet. Yes. Uh, they're amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was referring also to the, the to the pariatalis. Oh, okay. Um, that's the regular red-sided that range from Canada down through the central part of the U.S. throughout the Plains states. Um, nice. They have some really nice colors. I've got two males from Montana, and I'm waiting on a friend whose female just had 46 babies. So oh, wow. I'll be getting a couple females. 46 from yes, one plus? Is. Yes. Wow. I guess how, she's, how big is this female? I think he said she's like 36, 38 inch, something Jeez. like that. Wow. Her last couple litters were 23, 25, and then this year she just was Prime huge. Year. And she had uh, 46 live, and I think there were three stillborns. Wow, that is amazing. It's awesome. a big litter. That doesn't surprise me, though, because even down where we've been herping, we have found some little neo garters that are just... They're so tiny. Tiny. They very, can pop very small. <laughs> they can pop a ton. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I guess that makes sense. When the babies are that small, you can have more of yeah. them. Well, let's have Jason and I jump out. We'll have your daughters jump <coughs> in. We'll have you introduce them. They obviously help you out here with the business. And then we'll have the three of you show off your most prized parts of your collection. Show us show us what's going on in the world of garter snakes. These are, are my uh, two assistants. Um, this is Nikki Aaron. She's been one of the biggest workers here, helping me out on herping trips and feeding and cleaning and uh, acquiring new stuff. And then this is Kelly Wilson, my other daughter. She's a um, big help, um, goes on herping trips and and uh, she likes to work at the expos with us and help us get the babies out there for everybody to see and occasionally buy. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Let's, let's see some snakes. Where do you want to start? We're going to start with the Goldens. These are the Golden Plains Garters. Are you kidding me? Wow. Those are stellar. And you they're know what those growing. remind me of? 
an aurora house snake. They do look a little oh, bit like an aurora <laughs> house snake. Wow. Yes. I wouldn't. I wasn't expecting that green. Yeah. Yeah, they're turn. They're definitely looking pretty good. The littler one's getting a little more green. God. Has a little more of a broken pattern on the neck, whereas the other one has the just the spot in the middle of each scale all the way down. So is that a brand new morph right there? Or, it's. Or? There's another person in uh, Wisconsin that has that was given to adults that are you know that we call them goldens. They're also known as granites and the checkered and the goldens and the easterns. Okay. How's She's got two adults that were given to her, okay. um, and. They it? bred and th and produce ten visuals, but she's not parting with any. She right. might trade with me when I produce. So, do um, they change much as adults in color? Um, just depends on different morphs. I mean, these are turning greener as they get older. Yeah, I love them. Um, some of them, like with the, the erythristic planes and stuff, they start out normal and turn red as they grow. Yeah, so those are sharp. These are. Definitely my favorite. I think I think I'm one, envious. I those are amazing. I and I'll be honest. I think one of my biases is that when we think of the planes, I don't necessarily think of. I don't necessarily think that's where all the most vibrant and oh, amazing nice snakes ones. are. But there's definitely some. Yes. There's a lot of milks and kings. Definitely. But that shocks me that yeah, that's. Those are sharp. So what what state or states are these most common in? Uh, they range from Canada down through the central part of the U.S., you know, along the edge of Montana, Colorado, over through Kansas, and you know, through all that area. And they vary in color. Next year. Um, yeah, i got to show you my Kansas Plains and the mother of these guys. Okay. Wow. Um, Plains are also one of my favorites because they're, the, they're calm. I mean, yeah, they're active. But yeah, those are chilling they don't, pretty good. They don't those are really well behaved. bite. And well, the yeah. planes have some of the, the highest number of morphs. And, okay. And I've only got two and working on a third. So, yeah, those so, are well behaved. Yes, they are. They're not so cool. going crazy. You got two of them. <laughs> they stay very active. They are gorgeous. Thanks, yeah. And they're both boys, which I'm happy for. <laughs> I so, this is what the Montana planes look that like. That's very sharp, too. There, she's. I love it. Strong and healthy and that bold that they bold have nice, orange stripe. Yes. That's sweet. Very yes. bold top stripe there. Wow. So I'm waiting to pair those up with her and so, produce. So a question. Wild cots like to musk. How is captive? They still musk? Captive rarely better. musk. They're a lot better. And it varies with the species. Okay. Um, the wild cots, like wanderings, they'll musk, but once you've had them, handle them, they're like, okay, I'm they good. Get used to it. Okay. Valley garters, they. They don't. They, they <laughs> continue. Okay. <laughs> they okay. continue. I was checking out my big female, and. The valley she garters didn't. don't let up. Uh uh, no. <laughs> Poo slinging fools is what we call them. Wow. <laughs> she, she didn't Poo squirt it, but. Yeah, the big girl, she didn't squirt. She just wrapped her tail around and stretched out and just rubbed Smear. all over me. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> Smear campaign. Yeah. This is the Kansas wow. locality. It's Cheyenne Bottom. So if you're out there and you find these, I need a male really bad. But her stripe is crazy. There's a lot of red yeah, planes out there in Kansas, in the central part. And a lot of red ciders in Prietalis. But this is, she's an active one. It was a... I got it from a guy that was you know, doing some work in his college, and he's going for his Ph.D. out of Canada, and he's down here doing all sorts of herping, and he brought a bunch to Utah, red-sided, and a bunch of these planes. Um, took him up to uh, the college up there in Logan, and there, where they're studying the effects of toad Weber State. Toxins, mm -hmm. uh, toxins and stuff like that. So. Very cool. But I got a little female, and now I need a male for now. But her colors are just nice. I just love that stripe. It's unreal. Very orange. And that's an indoor lighting. I can only imagine how that, that pops up. This is the snow. Okay. So it's an anery and albino cross or melanistic. It's got a little bit of purple to it, huh? Yeah. Pink, purple. 
It's a He's an active time. beast. But still very handleable. Yeah. Yeah. Occasionally garters will breed during the middle of summer without any cooling. And that's why I'm hoping that, <laughs> that's why I'm keeping these two together. <laughs> wow. She was bred with a Montana male. And at her huge size had five babies. <laughs> they, wow. They averaged 20 to 40 babies. But you only got three. Yeah. <laughs> it's only got five. <laughs> yes. All right. Now these are the snow and anery head albino babies. So tiny. Yes. <laughs> Very active. Yeah, let's have one in your hand for perspective. <laughs> These are teeny. Yes, they are and little that's babies. What, that's what we were talking about. We have found some in there that are this small. It's amazing. His anneries are really dark. Mm -hmm. So dark. They, they've been called anneries for years. A lot of them call them melanistic, so... There's a lot of arguing over morph names and stuff, so. What else is new? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Things never change. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, way cool. so tiny. <laughs> it's like you're doing ambient keeping. In other words, you're not heating each tub. So what's the temperature in this room? It's probably in the upper upper 70s <laughs> upper 70s yeah. okay but what do you what are you typically aiming for just uh, yeah just in the upper 70s okay you know, sometimes the summer they get a little hotter so they don't like things particularly warm they can overheat pretty easy okay so here's one of our new acquisitions this is an albino lake chapala garter and where is that from um lake chapala in mexico, mexico. Um, there's a group with Thamnophis equus species. There's about eight of them. And they all live around specific lakes down there. And Stephen Ball over in Europe, uh, over in the Netherlands, he's a garter god. <laughs> he gets all kinds. And he was breeding the Lake Chapalas, and one year out of nowhere, a couple of albinos popped up in a litter out of wild cots, and he was just like, wow. uh. And he had a good, good, uh, varied groups so he was able to produce and produce strong genes and we just acquired this one from a lady up in uh and I up hope north the of logan picks up this pattern and there's also a stripe yeah she and he just ate <laughs> so he's still yeah. hopefully the camera good. can pick up that contrast but yeah that's gorgeous he holds still <laughs> yeah. like chapala's the thanophis equus the that family they're all larger um, females can range up to four feet and males up to three feet but the Chapalas are known for their blue color no oh, good you so this is a normal Chapala okay I can see the blue yeah blue stripe wow look at that head They also get to be stocky for garters. Wow. This is why it's hard to get good pictures too. Yeah. <laughs> they don't hold still. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and some of these colors are hard to probably pick up as well in cameras. I didn't hear you. That's <laughs> my nice. phone, yes. I know. <laughs> I kinda know. <laughs> yeah, they do get they do get nice and Bulky, nice and stocky. <coughs> all kinds of now, I remember one from the last time we saw you, and I might be remembering it wrong, but was it Santa Cruz? Yes. I um, remember that one being a stunner. I'm trying to think where those two are. <clears throat> I'm going to try different labeling things <laughs> here and there, yonder. Oh, that's the Scotty. This is one of our big ones. This is another Thamnophis equus. Scotty. That's, a, that's cool. She's still got some growing to do. And where's this one from? Look at that long head. Uh, I don't know exactly, but they're down in... It's another one of those down in Mexico. Another Mexican species. Yeah. 
Man, that is a huge head for a garter. Do you know what species lives down uh, near Cabo? Um, um, no, I don't. There's quite, there's a... I'll show you the video I have. Quite a number of them down there, and there's some I want to get, but... <clears throat> Stephen Bowl gets, he gets them somehow, and... Well, I'll tell you, there's some nice ones. The Sumacraft's garter is my favorite. They have a, like, a, they're a smaller species. They got the normal brown checkering and stuff, but they also have a variant that has circles down the side, and it looks more like a corn snake. Oh, God, they are awesome. They're kind of rare. Yeah, but are you? That's the you're one. You're not doing. That one's, I'm wondering about her. She doesn't seem to be doing well. But this one is. Oh, okay. And she's the feisty. That's the one snot. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, every time I see those, I'm like, Wowed. Tim Spuckler produces them, and I'm hoping to get a mail or two from him this year. Tim has some nice stuff, yes. Uh, yes. I'm a huge fan of contrast, and I mean, that is about as good as it gets. That's sharp. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he found some nice uh, San Francisco's down there, posted pictures. I'm like, yeah, those are some nice snakes. Yeah. They're still. Don't they uh, just come from one pond or something? Is that what there's there's just a couple? limited area down there. Um, I heard there was just two or one or two spots or something. Uh, there's more. There's. I mean, last time I, I read, a long time ago, they estimated about a thousand left. Um, oh jeez. Uh, there's some. <clears throat> yeah, and then, so they're they're protected, but. But in Europe, they can have them, right? Yeah, there was a zoo in the '70s that had a bunch, uh -huh. and of course their garters and got busy, and they got a whole bunch, and they said, "Well, they're protected. We can't." They won't bring it. Yeah, they can't. They bring wouldn't it. release them back, so they sent them overseas, and they've been keeping them over there for years. In addition to that bold stripe, there's still a pattern yeah. mm -hmm. of those contrasting colors running down the side. It's really, really pretty. This is definitely the one I was thinking of. Now, is this Santa Cruz, Mexico, California? California. California. Yeah. Wow. That is beautiful. Hi. <laughs> Ooh. Blue stripe. All right, wow. that's there. Uh, there's blue. Thamnophis similis. They're from the northwestern part of Florida. No doubt and about that blue. They are not the sweetest garter. <laughs> Biters? Yes. And she's calming down, all right. But that's I got a, a nice, that's a beautiful nice scene. group wow. of them. That is amazing. Look at that head flatten out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's, yeah. Smelling. <laughs> she's smelling you. She'll probably kill you. Do they ever just turn and bite you? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. That's what I remember as a kid, <laughs> having like a handful. Like, oh, she sees you moving for her. That is she yeah. you. Beautiful. She tagged me on the finger getting her out. <laughs> I remember as a kid carrying like 10, put down one by me. <laughs> After dad had a surgery, I had to come over and help him feed because he couldn't. That one up and he turned right. Bite marks all the way up my arm. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding? Wow, that's funny. <laughs> this is the parietalis. Gorgeous. And where are these? Uh, they're they're ranged. Um, I don't know if they make it into Canada, but they from Montana down through Kansas and west to Missouri. I was always bummed as a kid growing up and seeing all the garter snakes in the books and stuff, and none of our garters look like that around here with the big yellow stripes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, our garters are a little plainer. Yeah. I've had some killer. Uh, ki I've had some cool wanderings as a kid. Like I had one that I think was Anery. It was just gray. It's just like this silver gray. Black mix are still pretty cool though. Good luck finding them, though. Yeah. <laughs> I've caught checkers in Arizona. We were actually looking the other day when we were there. Struck out. Dang, because I need... <laughs> I've got They're one female. Nice. I've got a, a wildcat female I've had a couple years. Well, two. The little one's just... It, it eats like once a month. And it's uh -huh. just... I'm like, all right, either eat or, <laughs> or go. So. so what do we have here? 
So it's a blue phase, right? Blue phase, Oregon red spot. <laughs> but you could tell that it's normally red on the sides, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Wow. And look at that granite head. I could grab the regular one and put them next to each other to pair them. Oops. Spot on the top of the head there is pretty too. How about these? These are two of my new Easterns from Michigan. I just love the yellow, yellow coloring and this, you know, the clean stripe on the back. I'm kind of fond of this one where the stripe on the tail disappears. Yeah, it does. I've got a male like that too, so pair them up next year. The fun of garters. Yeah. Chill out. So the blue phase we were looking at before, this is what they look like normal. That's just this cool. Yeah. <laughs> this is my favorite garter snake. There are some real high red ones. That one, too. that one is sharp. Wow. Yes. Now you combine the blue and the red. That is amazing. They were a lot of fun. If they'd sit still. Yeah, <laughs> Hi, I'll kiss you too. Is gorgeous. Well, geez, if you stop shaking. Shh. Okay. <laughs> you spooked her. That doesn't happen. I don't sh not shake. I'll feel that. <laughs> and crew, thank you very much. We appreciate you letting us come by and take a look at everything. Of course. Oh, we you're welcome. It. Yeah. Welcome. Happy to have you guys over. Thanks. And we'll see you at the expo in the fall. Yes, you <laughs> will. <laughs> thank you.